Happy Monday Motivation, everybody. Hopefully the weekend was absolutely fantastic for you. Uh, so let's get stuck into it. Not much happening. Just again, a reminder about the Industry Skills Fund. So if you're in Australia and you're looking at getting some government funding for training, uh, that includes also the stuff that we do at Black Belt Business, then let's go and um, put your application in. Um, and the Christmas party, it looks like it is confirmed. I know a couple of you guys can't make that date, um, unfortunately, uh, though it's going to be a good experience. So I'll make sure I get you guys that missed out um, something a bit different as well. Other than that, let's just wind up to the end of the year and uh, make it a good couple of months. The reality is it's only a couple of months to go. So what am I going to talk about today on Monday Motivation? And I, I don't know if you're aware, but the last five weeks for me has been quite stressful in regards to uh, Hep Keto and organizing some stuff. And long and short of the story is I'd organize um, fundraising to get some funds to get more equipment. I ordered the equipment. I organized a company to get the freight. Uh, and long and the short of it is, is after a week the freight still not had arrived. Um, constant phone calls to the freight company as well as the um, third party freight uh, company. And reality is they just couldn't find my freight. Not whatsoever. And the key is, is there was mistakes along the way. All the way along this process there was mistakes. The third party freight company should not have um, signed me up. They didn't offer me insurance on the equipment. They didn't do um, their due diligence. And, you know, they just thought they were helping me out, which was fantastic. I, I love people helping you out. But the, the processes weren't followed for one. Next thing you know, the, um, the actual freight company itself just did not give a care in the world about the lost freight. Yeah, yeah, we'll get someone to get back to you. Out of all the phone calls I made, no one actually got back to me whatsoever. Um, the mistakes also were made from my supplier who I organized the equipment for who didn't actually fill out the freight um, forms correctly and put it on each item. They just put it on one item and handed paperwork to the driver and said, there you go. The driver said, should have said, no, these weren't correct. So it was a magnitude of errors from, from step one. Um, reality is, after five weeks or four and a half weeks, the freight literally still had not been found. I, I took $2,000 of fundraising money to buy this equipment and that was literally going to be thrown out the window because the mistakes that actually happened all the way through literally had left me in a situation where I couldn't do anything about it. Uh, the third party freight company who really didn't care um, and were actually telling lies along the way saying they'd spoken to the freight company. Um, yeah, the investigation is still open even though the investigation had been closed two days before. They come back and saying, well, you refuse to set up an account so we're not covering you. Yes, they did ask me if I wanted to set up an account. I said no because I'm not going to be using you guys. This is a one-off situation. They then went ahead to use their... Ah, look, I, I can sit here all day, but for me it was extremely stressful because here I am waiting for new equipment. We needed new equipment. We, I did the right thing and reality is any everyone just talk you know literally just rub their hands up and says well tough you didn't do this you didn't do this you didn't do this and as a consumer you know unless we're actually reading the terms and conditions way fully unless we're asking the right questions on stuff that you know we we employ experts and companies to do this stuff for us you know we just don't know and, and here's the thing out of all of this process now to summarize what happened is I got an email back from the third party, third party um, freight company that says, we're taking no liability. You didn't take out insurance. The, the freight company's terms and conditions, 11.3 states, if they lose it, it's not their responsibility. So you should have taken out insurance. There is nothing else that we can do. And you know what? Out of everything, that last sentence actually got me. There is nothing else we can do. We've exhausted our avenues. And they were, they were the last words. And I'm just sitting here going, you've exhausted your last avenues. Really? Okay. So what I did is I took it on myself to then ring um, the freight company for about the, and I'm not exaggerating, probably the 18th time. And I've rang this freight company. I said, look, 
I want a copy of my entire file, my entire history. I've now got to take this on to legal action. I've now got to take this to court, office of fair trading, a current affair, um, you know, wherever. And reality is the lady turned around on the phone and turned around and says, look, just give me five minutes. Let me read the notes. You stay on the line. She read the notes and she's gone, look, our internal processes haven't worked correctly for you. I'm going to apologize to you now. We haven't done what we're supposed to do. So reality is, can you give me until 12 o'clock tomorrow to ring me back? And of course, I'm in a state of mind where I went, no, you guys never, ever, ever call me back. Every time you've told me you're calling me back, you've never, ever done it. So no, I'm staying on the phone until I actually get a copy of my file. She goes, no, look, honestly, just just give it to her. I went, okay, I'm going to, I got the lady's name and all of that. And you know what was interesting? Within half an hour, um, and I was actually running in the bush at this stage out for my um, afternoon run, and I get this phone call from Blacktown Depot of this freight company, and they're going, oh, we found your freight. Um, we'll get it all wrapped up. How many items was it? Let me just confirm it's all there. Yep, it's all there. We'll just send it to you. And, you know, if I'd actually got on this lady in the first place, I probably would have had my freight, you know, four weeks ago. Here's the, here's the crux about everything, and here's why we've got this picture of this image of this lady, is what reviews do you think I'm going to give these people? At the end of the day, what type of review am I going to give the freight company? What review am I going to give the third-party freight company? Um, I'm not going to worry about my supplier in all of this because at the end of the day, you know, the driver at this freight company should have picked up the error there. So what type of review am I going to leave for this person? At the end of the day, we're talking about a multi-billion dollar organization owned by you know, an Australia Post, so you probably know who the freight company is now. But you know what type of review am I going to leave? They weren't following their processes. I was being dicked around. There was lack of customer care. What type of review was I going to leave these? And you know, at the end of the day, I did send an email back to the third party freight company and says, look, I know you're just trying to help me out, but I can tell you now, the last five weeks have been extremely stressful and your processes weren't followed and I was going to be actually penalized because you didn't follow your processes. So I left a one-star review on Google about this company and I want you to think about your customers and, and you know what type of reviews would they leave you in terms of following these processes. And you know, I'm actually going to show you today about how to actually get customers to write reviews because I, I think it is important that you do get reviews. I, I've got a lot of reviews on my Hepkido school. I never asked for them, but on Facebook, I've got a lot of reviews on my Hepkido school. So I think it's at 4.8 stars. Um, you know, so I, I want you to think about, you know, are you sending out reviews? And if you had to actually get every customer to write a review, how much different would it actually be? is your service? How much different would you be training your team? How much different would you actually knowing that every time that you actually did another job or provided another product that they were going to scrutinize right down the very point about what and um, how you actually, you know, how you followed up, how you dealt with the customer, how you dealt with them, how you, you know, provided your service or delivered your product, what were the, you know, if all of that was being scrutinized, would you do things a bit differently? And I want you to think about this. Every job that you go and do, every service or every product that you deliver, are you going to write a review? And I always challenge people out there to write a good review. I've never, ever in my entire life written a negative review. Never, ever, ever, ever have I actually gone in there and written. This week has been the first time I've ever, ever done that. And, you know, I'm not proud of the fact, but at the end of the day, I also want to know that that stress that they've put me under has been incredible. Now, when I look at the freight company's reviews, they've literally got 1.2 stars. And as a company, I would be actually, you know, I'd be horrified if I was running that company that says, you're kidding me. My mission in life would be actually get it up to at least three stars over the next 12 months. You know, how do you actually do that? People should care about and, and think about that if they've got to have their products and services scrutinized every single time they um, deliver it or produce a new customer, how would they actually treat their, their service differently? Would they treat it differently? So guys, 
one thing I'm going to challenge you guys is every job or every product you do, you send a link out on an email that says, hey, could you spend two minutes just reviewing our, our services to see what it's actually like. So um, I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, it's really easy. There's a couple of options. And let me just get to those options. Yeah. All right. So first of all, in Google, um, quite simply, you would bring up your company name. Now, you need to have a, a Google Maps page or a Google Places page. And I've just brought up Black Belt Business here. And as you can see, you've got this option called write a review. So if you click on that, what it does is it gives you a new URL at the top here. So all you would do is copy that URL into an email um, and send it out to the person. So as you can see, if I paste that in, you'll see that that will actually come up with write a review. So that would be the easiest way to get a review out there regarding Google. And Google reviews do make in effect some SEO um, changes on your website as well. Now I've been naughty, I don't have a review. So I'm gonna ask you guys to actually go in and review me and I'm gonna send a link on this. Two second review just to say, hey, Nathan's great, Nathan sucks, he needs to improve. Give me the appropriate stars, I'm happy to take the feedback um, and go from there. People freak out when they get a negative review. I don't, I find that it actually should be able to challenge you to go, well, what happened? Why did I get that negative review? Um, and then in under Facebook, you need a page and you've got an option here called review. Um, and quite simply, all you would do is actually just send that page. Um, I'll copy the link up the top there and send that page to um, so people can actually review. As you can see, it just goes straight to um, that review page and then they can actually go and um, write it. So I have had people who have never used my services write reviews in Facebook and write bad reviews. The good news is you can actually contact Facebook and you can contact that person and say, hey, you've written a review on my page. I don't know who you are. You've never been here. So this is really bad. I'm going to actually you know, get you blocked from Facebook for actually being writing negative reviews. So you can actually go and, and do that. So I'm going to suggest that you go and put these um, links into follow-up emails um, and ask people if they can just spend two minutes to write the review so you can improve yourself. So, guys, a long-winded Monday motivation, but I just thought you'd um, you know like to see how to easily do that, and you know let's start getting some really good reviews. I'm going to make it my mission to review each one of my clients' um, pages um, every single week. So expect some reviews there and um, yeah go out and smash it guys go and have a great week and I will catch up with you shortly all right bye for now